In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to practice like a pro. What's going on everyone? My name is Josh Rezepka and in today's video I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks that you can start implementing in your practice session today that will help you practice like a pro. Now, what do I mean by that when I say practice like a pro? Well, I've got a whole bunch of tips and these are just guidelines. These are things that you can start doing in your practice session that are gonna help you optimize the way you practice. Uh, if there's one thing that I can say is that almost every professional musician I know is very goal oriented. Because of that, they have an agenda, uh, they have goals that they are really trying to accomplish uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Uh, you know, they, they set goals and then they practice to reach those goals. So I'd really recommend if you don't have a journal, if you don't have somewhere uh, that you write down your practice goals, what you're working on, uh, that you start doing that because you're going to notice, uh, you're going to notice improvements in your playing. If you don't identify and really uh, make decisions on what you're trying to accomplish, on what you're trying to get better at, uh, you're going to be practicing, well, kind of aimlessly. and. I don't really know that many pro musicians that practice aimlessly. Uh, they always have a focus. And uh, some of them, I know a lot of pro musicians that they have basically written out for the day what they're trying to accomplish, uh, the tempos they've been working on it, the keys they've been working on it. This way they can really track what they're doing and uh, all these goals that they're setting for themselves, they can reach them. Now, speaking of practice sessions, a lot of pro musicians out there, they don't just practice once a day. They practice two or three times a day. They break it up into multiple sessions. And there are a lot of reasons to do that. Just from a mental standpoint, it's really great to be able to have a intense focus and then take a break. Uh, intense focus, take a break. And from a more practical and physical standpoint on the trumpet, uh, you can't play trumpet endlessly. And uh, you're gonna wear yourself out uh, more than you're gonna build yourself up if you just uh, play a two, three, four, five hour session all at once you really want to break it into chunks. If you can break your practice session into two or three pieces, uh, maybe a morning and an evening or a morning afternoon and then a little in the evening, uh, you're really going to notice a very big difference. Now, when you're getting ready to practice, one of the first things you want to do is make sure that you eliminate distractions. All right, put your phone away, turn off the TV, uh, try and get yourself to a place where you can really focus on what you're trying to accomplish and that you can really focus on the music without being distracted, without looking at your phone and uh, writing emails or any of these things because that's gonna keep you from being in the flow. That's gonna keep you from really getting into a deep state of learning. Another tip is when you're about to practice, get everything ready, get everything out. Get your horn, get any mutes, get your tuner, your metronome, uh, a recording device. Lots of pros out there, they record their practice sessions so they can listen to them later. So you've got everything ready to practice. Uh, you've got everything all kind of uh, set up with your agenda, you know what you're going to work on, that's really going to allow you to get into a great practice flow in order to you know, really make the most of your practice session. One thing that pro musicians do all the time in their practice session, uh, they practice slowly, they practice deliberately. Uh, we don't want to make any errors when we're playing and uh, if you really practice slowly, you're going to learn something really, really well. So we start slow with whatever we're working on and then we take our metronome and we move it up a couple clicks and then a couple clicks and we keep working on it until we can play it, not just at the tempo that we're going to perform it at, uh, but really you should work on it a couple tempos further. So if your goal is to work up a passage to 120 beats per minute and that's how you're going to perform it, uh, work it up to 132. Work it up a little bit faster because that way when you get to the performance, when you're in that place and you need to play it at 120, uh, it's going to feel relaxed. It's going to feel slow. And that's one thing that really sets pros apart from uh, beginners and amateurs. It's the way they practice and what they focus on when they're practicing. So beginners and amateurs, they love to play the parts that they're good at. And pros, well, they don't really play the parts that they can already play. Uh, if, if I have a piece of music and, and there's lines and lines and lines that I have no problem playing, uh, I won't practice them. I'm not going to play them. I will find those couple measures that are giving me difficulty and I will focus on those. And I'll start slow and I'll move a little faster, a little faster, until I can play it faster than it's written. Another tip that I'll do is if there's a piece and it's maybe a little high and it's tricky, 
uh, I'll play it on the B flat trumpet. And once I've got it nailed, once I've got it so that I can play it, I'll take out my C trumpet and I'll play the same passage and it'll be up a whole step. So I'm making it more difficult for myself. And of course you can transpose it as well. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm training myself to be able to play it faster than I need to, training to play it higher than I need to. Uh, so when I get to the performance, I am, I'm not worried. I can play it and I know it is just gonna be uh, totally in control and it's gonna sound exactly the way that I want it to sound. So when we're practicing our music, how do we know when we've practiced enough? How do we know when we've really got it, when we've got it nailed? I love the saying, don't practice until you get something right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. Practice until you play it perfectly every time. We don't wanna just be lucky. We don't wanna say, oh, I got it. it, sounded good. I'm gonna leave it like that. That is leaving too much to chance. See if you can play it three times in a row perfectly. See if you can play it five times. If you can play something 10 times in a row without making an error, and you know, if you get to number nine and you mess up, you gotta start all over again. So 10 times in a row without making any errors. And when I say errors, I don't just mean reading errors. I don't mean uh, rhythms or notes, I mean music. All right, playing something without uh, musicality and without intention and dynamics and, and really uh, you know, emoting, that's not playing it right. So uh, to me, that's just as much of an error as missing an accidental. Playing it 10 times the way that you wanna play it in a performance, expressive, and uh, of course then accurate as well. That is when you know you've really nailed something. And by then you've probably also got it memorized, which is just gonna make your performance even better. Uh, so that is how we know when we've really mastered something, when we can really play something uh, perfectly time and time again. So as I mentioned earlier, it's great to break your practice session up into uh, multiple parts. So you can have an early morning practice session, an afternoon and evening, uh, or an afternoon and an evening. Uh, however you wanna break it up is great. But even in those individual practice sessions, we wanna make sure that we are incorporating rest. Uh, and I've said in past videos, 20 minutes on, 10 minutes off, uh, whatever works for you. Make sure you are incorporating rest into your practice session because we don't wanna beat up our chops. We wanna make sure that we are always uh, feeling fresh, that we're always feeling good. And anytime that you start feeling that you really are, are having to work, then take a break. Take a break for 10 minutes and then come back to the horn. Over time, that is really going to help build up your chops uh, more than just kind of wearing them out and uh, you know, constantly playing on kind of broken chops. Now, another thing that us pros do when we practice is we practice for the gig. And what I mean by that is uh, we simulate in our practice session what it's going to be like on the gig. If you're playing in an orchestra and if you wanna you know, really be good at playing in an orchestra, uh, you've got to get used to uh, playing really intensely, really full and loud, and then having long breaks where you don't play at all. And then, just picking up the horn and playing again. There are so many situations where that happens. And there's a lot of uh, different shows out there, musicals and, and operas where you're gonna have to play and then have these very long breaks. And then you gotta pick up the horn and you've just gotta nail it. If you're just used to practicing 45 minutes, an hour straight, uh, you're never training your chops to do that. You're never training your chops to just, you know, go at it really hard and then take a 20 minute break, cold, right? Put the timer on, 20 minute break. Uh, 30 minute break, then pick up the horn, bam, do it again. And that takes some time, takes some practice. So that's what you've gotta do. That's one thing that I've had to do many times with my playing. Once I started going on the road with Under the Street Lamp, I had to learn how to basically warm up early in the day and then have a really short but intense sound check and then take a couple hour break and then just hit it at the gig, right? To be able to just come out and play. I started practicing like that at home. I started warming up and then I would play real intense for a little bit and then I would take a break and I would come back two hours later and I'd do quick 10 minute little warm up and then I would pull up charts and I would play through you know, a whole bunch of uh, rock and roll charts. That's what I did to prepare myself to be able to do that on the road so that I wasn't going into shock by picking my horn up after a couple hours uh, of not playing because it's not like I'm gonna put a whole practice session in between uh, sound check and the show. Between sound check and the show, 
uh, I've got to eat dinner. I maybe have to go to the hotel and shower because we may have been traveling all day. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, things that could have popped up which would keep me from doing a big practice session and keeping my chops going that entire time. So I had to learn how to do that. So practice for the gig. Whether you're trying to be in an orchestra or playing in a big band, playing lead trumpet, playing uh, in a small jazz ensemble, whatever it is, really imagine and envision what it's gonna be like on the day to day and incorporate that into your practice because uh, that's gonna allow you to really succeed on the bandstand. And the last couple tips, uh, always let the music guide you. That is so important, uh, especially as you get more difficult and more uh, you know, complex music, let the music guide you. We are musicians, we're trying to communicate musically and it's not supposed to be this barrage of chops and technique. We're supposed to be playing music. So let the music guide you. And anytime that you have something in your music that you're working on that's very difficult, uh, if it's something that is uh, very technically challenging, uh, don't necessarily approach it from the standpoint of what can I do uh, technically that's gonna allow me to accomplish this. Go from the musical standpoint. Uh, look at it and say, okay, what is the best musical solution for this passage? Uh, what is gonna be the most musical way that I can play this passage? And use that to guide your technique. We don't want our technique to go first and our music to you know, kind of catch up. Uh, we want to lead with the music and let the music guide us. And then our technique is gonna follow us. With that in mind, you need to practice to be flexible. It's really very important that we practice in lots of different styles uh, and that we're flexible and able to adapt on the bandstand, especially if you're playing in an orchestra and a large ensemble uh, or some group that has a music director, someone that's, that's coming to the group and really kind of guiding and shaping the musical direction of what's going to be going on. Um, you need to be flexible. You need to practice your music in different styles, different speed, different vibrato, different articulations. That way you're ready. So when they get up onto the podium and they say, okay, we're gonna take this, a little faster, or could we do it in this style? Or could you be a little softer? Could you be a little louder? You need to practice in different styles and with different techniques so that uh, you are really ready and uh, feel very comfortable on the bandstand, no matter the situation. And finally, make sure you don't abuse your chops and uh, cool down at the end of your practice sessions. Uh, do some easy, soft playing, maybe some, some low stuff, some pedal tones, uh, some lip buzzing, you know, some kind of like a some flapping of your lips, whatever you need to do to get yourself uh, centered again, feeling good and, uh, you know, in a position so that the next time you pick up your horn, uh, everything feels great because we don't want to be, uh, you know, overextending ourselves and then not bringing ourselves back to the center and not recovering because the next practice session, we're going to have to spend time, you know, kind of putting ourselves back together. And uh, that's not the best way to start off a practice session. So I hope that all these tips help you out and get you thinking about practicing a little bit differently. Um, if you start implementing these tips in your practice session, I guarantee that you will start getting great results and you'll really feel a lot of accomplishment that you're really getting a lot done because you're gonna be focused and you will be getting a lot done. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please click that like button and the subscribe button, it really makes a very big difference. I wanna thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.